everyone, in this video we're going to be doing an AP Biology cell energy review. So this will be for my AP Biology students who might be studying for their midterm, or for any students who might be working on challenge focus areas in my regular biology class. And remember, of course, this review is just that. It's a review. It's not a comprehensive guide to any of these topics, so please use it as a resource just to refresh your memory on some of these things. But if you need a deeper understanding of anything we mentioned in the video, please go back and use our other class resources. Really quickly, I want to talk about glycolysis. Remember, this is kind of a throwback to our ideas about evolution and common ancestors and the idea that nearly all existing organisms perform glycolysis, the idea that glycolysis occurs under anaerobic conditions, and the fact that glycolysis occurs in the cytosol means that probably some of the very first organisms on Earth uh, had glycolysis and or conserved metabolic process through all of our common ancestors. So we could have had glycolysis happen before there were even membrane-bound organelles, since it doesn't happen inside an organelle. We could have had glycolysis happening when there was a very oxygen poor environment. So we don't need oxygen to perform glycolysis. So it was probably one of the earliest metabolic processes that all living organisms performed. And um, because it's so universal, we can take this as a piece for evidence of evolution. All right, so let's get into the nitty gritty of cellular respiration. Remember, cellular respiration is a process that's combined in several different metab metabolic pathways, including glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. Now remember, oxidative phosphorylation is gonna be the ending part, but this is where the large amount of ATP is gonna be formed as a result of the transfer of electrons um, from NADH um, or from FADH to, uh, to oxygen by a series of electron carriers. And remember here, oxygen is used as the final electron acceptor. Um, this is taking place in the mitochondria across the inner membrane uh, or across the cristae. And again, it's the major source of ATP in these organisms that are going to perform aerobic cellular respiration. So let's go back to the beginning. Remember, glycolysis occurs in the cyto cytosol, so outside of the actual mitochondria. It's not within that organelle. And here we're breaking down glucose into our pyruvate, and we do not use oxygen at this step. In the end, we're going to have pyruvate, ATP, and of course NADH and some hydrogen ions. This is going to the next step. We're going to take us into the mitochondria, and here we're breaking we're breaking down the pyruvate uh, from glycolysis into carbon dioxide and H2O. So this is where the carbon dioxide is generated overall from the process of cellular respiration, and then we end up with carbon dioxide, ATP, NADH and FADH2. Finally, when we go to our oxidative phosphorylation, this is going to occur across the inner membrane of the mitochondria. And again, most of the ATP production is going to occur here. And there's a stepwise release of energy through our electron transport chain. And we have the production of ATP with ATP synthase, which is our enzyme, using these hydrogen ion pumps. And this is called chemoosmosis. And in the end, we're going to end up with a lot of ATP. And again, oxygen is used here as the final electron acceptor. If you want to review cellular respiration and all the different parts of it, including glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain, I would recommend looking at the 2015 um, AP Biology FRQ question that references all three of these particular pathways. It's a great way to practice some of the important components of cellular respiration and see what it's like on an AP test, so I recommend checking that out. All right, let's talk about photosynthesis. You should know the equation or the basic overall equation for photosynthesis being that carbon dioxide and water with addition of sunlight are going to yield glucose and oxygen. So chloroplasts are the location of photosynthesis um, and chloroplasts are specialized organelles that we can find in algae and higher plants that are going to capture energy uh, through photosynthesis. Um, and so that energy is then used to create our organic molecules like glucose. So during photosynthesis, we're going to have chlorophylls absorbing the free energy from the light and boosting electrons to a higher energy level in photosystems one and two, and we'll see what that looks like in a second. Um, there's lots of different types of chlorophyll, but um, the one we talk about for the most part in AP Biology is chlorophyll A. All right, so remember, photosynthesis is a series of coordinated reaction pathways that capture free energy from sunlight to yield ATP and NADPH, which power the production of organic molecule, which is glucose. So we have light in the form of photons um, that are going to be absorbed in the chlorophyll. And the again, this absorbs the free energy from light, which boosts our electrons to higher levels in these two photosystems. Um, so photosystems one and two are going to be uh, embedded into the internal membranes of the chloroplast 
class, which are the thylakoids. So here we go, here's a thylakoid stack, and then these are the membranes here that they're embedded. And now we have an electron transport chain um, within these two photosystems as well. Remember, photosystem two comes first, and um, this electron transport chain is very similar to the one that we find within the mitochondria um, where ATP is generated. So when electrons are transferred between the molecules in a series of reactions, um, as they pass through the electron transport chain, what we have is an electrochemical gradient of our hydrogen ions or our protons across the thylakoid membrane, and the formation of this gradient, we're going to get um, the synthesis of ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate via ATP synthase, which is our enzyme. So again, we have ATP synthase showing up. Um, What's important to know is that the all of this part of photosynthesis is also called the light dependent reaction. Water is involved here and oxygen is released here. Now all of this is taking place um, within the thylakoid. The next steps are going to involve um, pathways that occur outside the thylakoid or in the stroma, but we're still within the chloroplast here. So the energy captured in the light reactions as ATP and NADPH is going to power the production of carbohydrates in our next step. So the Calvin cycle here is where we involve carbon dioxide. Now these again are called the dark reaction or carbon fixation reactions. Um, and so you do not need to memorize all the steps of the Calvin cycle, but know that it occurs in the stroma of the chloroplast and NADPH is going to be um, generated along with ATP in the light reactions to be used um, as part of the Calvin cycle. And so these are going to take our atmospheric carbon dioxide and produce our monosaccharides, which are our organic molecules or our sugars and um, in photosynthesis, our terminal electron acceptor is going to be um, NADP, which uh, as a comparison in cellular respiration, our terminal electron acceptor was oxygen. And so we think that the first photosynthesis, occur photosynthesis occurred on Earth within um, bacteria, and so we believe that prokaryotic photosynthetic pathways um, initially kind of began this oxygen boom on Earth, and then through endosymbiosis, we had a symbiont losing some genes, which eventually established um, our first chloroplast within eukaryotic organisms. So I think for both these processes, it helps to draw them out in a diagram form. Um, so please go back and review that as best you can. Thanks, guys.